All right. Hello, and welcome, uh, and thank you for having us. We are here to address the problem with the Van Vandalia State Pension, Van Purs underfunding problem, in order to protect the livelihoods of the public state workers and plan members, unlike those that were the heroes of 9-11 that fought to save lives and who later suffered cuts to their pensions due to poor fund management. My name is Wyatt. I'm here with Alim, Raphael, and Daria. We are SH Consulting, and we're presenting our recommendation to Olivia Adams and the Board of Directors to help Van Purs prepare for a funded future. Our three-pronged recommendation will begin with a quantitative analysis, followed by a governance and performance, and then concluding with fund restructuring. To begin our quantitative analysis, first, we took into account four key considerations. The first being the risk tolerance of the stakeholders of the Van Purs Pension Fund and how that impacted our implementation of leverage in order to improve returns for the fund. The second was we were restricted by the asset class characteristics provided to us by the actuarial assumptions in the case. And thirdly, we wanted to make sure we were able to fund the promised cash dis annual cash distributions to the current plan members. And in aggregate, we really wanted to make sure that our recommendation aligned with the long-term investment horizon of the Fan Purs Pension Fund. Beginning with our quantitative analysis, we were restricted with the going rate concern, which required us to discount our liabilities at the expected return of the portfolio. We, the fund currently sits at a 7% expected return, and so we wanted to solve initially to find the target rate that would allow us to be fully funded within the year. This required us to achieve an expected return of 9.45%, far beyond what the plan currently yields. So in considering the risk uh, return profile of the stakeholders, we wanted to optimize our portfolio in order to achieve the highest Sharpe ratio and provide the stakeholders with the most efficient portfolio. Assuming no, no leverage and all cash was invested, we optimized our portfolio and this yielded an expected return of 6.45% far below the target rate required, and this is where we began to look at implementing leverage into improving these returns to better um, solve the fund underfunding problem. In implementing leverage, we are constrained with a loan-to-value ratio of 0.5 times, or in other words, 50% leverage. We believed actually approaching this maximum constraint would um, in turn result in us taking on an excessive amount of volatility, exposing the current plan members to an un unnecessary amount of risk. So we capped our leverage implementation at 20%, and we optimized our portfolio, and were able to achieve slightly higher expected returns with an expected return of 7.06%, but with 3% less volatility. Um, we compared this to our fully funded scenario with a target rate of 9.45%, and this required us to take on an irresponsibly high amount, 93% leverage, uh, and we just believed this was uh, unnecessarily large, and it exceeded our leverage constraints. I'll now pass it on to Alim to explain how we rationalize the uncertainty of these portfolio characteristics. Thank you, Wyatt. So um, as Wyatt discussed, we did a scenario analysis of our leverage. So we did a Monte Carlo simulation. So we ran the simulation for a portfolio of 20% leverage as well as one with 90%, 93% leverage. Um, as you can see on the slide, the return distribution for the po portfolio with 93% leverage is much wider than the return distribution under the scenario with 20% leverage. 20% um, is about a 7% gap between 3 and 10%, whereas a 14% gap between the 1 and 15% for 93. This led to a much larger risk of a significant drawdown under the scenario with 93% leverage. Um, as you can see, about a one-fifth chance of a significant drawdown of the portfolio, which is too significant for a pension fund, which is why we went with the, uh, which, the recommendation of 20% leverage. We also um, suggest implementing a derivative strategy. Which, what this would entail is writing calls on the equity uh, portion of the portfolio. Um, the pur purpose of this would be to use the call premium to fund the cash distribution, instead of um, which would um, allow the um, the which would allow uh, the board to not have to sell part of the portfolio each year in order to fund the cash distribution, which will allow the portfolio to grow more. Um, in addition, we'd write the calls out of the money to ensure we are able to achieve our target return on equity. Um, so this is just a quick look at our asset allocation. Um, the key point here is that we've allocated a lot more to fixed income than under the previous um, case. Uh, what this allowed us to do was significantly reduce volatility. So that is the key takeaway there. And then a quick summary of our quantitative analysis. So our 
optimal um, leverage would be about 20%, um, which would give us an expected return of about just over 7%, and we would use the, the premium from the calls to fund the cash distribution. With that, I'll pass it on to Raphael, who will talk about governance. Thank you, Alem. Uh, so along with a quantitative strategy, we felt that a qualitative recommendation must be used in conjunction um, for the strategic long-term vision of the, of the fund. Uh, in terms of the board of directors, uh, you've currently limited uh, investment experience, and for this, we decided to add a filter for future additions, both on the elected and on the appointed members, um, to promote a high level of pension management uh, experience on the fund or on the board. Um, this will achieve a higher experience, to, uh, sorry, to achieve a long-term vision of Van Purse. In terms of management compensation, um, the C-suite is getting paid a lot less than its private counterparts. So for this, we recommended a hybrid compensation plan of base plus bonus, um, which will promote a higher incentive to appoint better asset managers in the future. In terms of fund performance, over the last 10 years, Van Purse has, has underperformed the historical uh, benchmark. Uh, we deem that with the change in board of directors as well as the uh, change in management compensation of the hybrid uh, plan, uh, you'll have higher caliber asset management personnel as well as better performance against the benchmark. Uh, with that, I'll pass it on to Daria to talk about fund restructuring. So as Raphael mentioned, there are some fundamental changes we recommend to make to the fund in order to make this a sustainable solution well into the future. So beginning with reducing the benefit factor from 3% to 2.4%, we will only apply this to any new incoming pension members as we don't want to break the promises we've already made to current employees and retirees. And we calculated this will reduce the newly accrued liabilities by 20%. So this would help the underfunding of 22% as it is currently. Um, and how we arrived at the 2.4% was through looking at a peer group of 20 state public pension funds in the United States, and they actually had an average benefit factor of 1.2%. So by doubling this, we believe that it still has enough of a draw for Vandalians to want to be in the state because they are currently leaving due to the economical situation of the state. This provides them with a lot of benefit to be in Vandalia, but it's still not too large of a number that um, the fund is not able to pay off its liabilities in the future. And this reduction of benefit factor also reduces the risk of an individual, individual municipality having to terminate um, their fund um, membership. And the next change, oh, sorry. The next change we recommend is to change from a defined benefit plan to a stacked hybrid plan. So this is because under the defined benefit plan, Van Purs currently bears all the risk because they guarantee payments to all members in the fund based off of years of service, their final year of salary, and the defined benefit factor as previously discussed. So by moving to a stacked hybrid plan where that is still present, but all employees will have a DC component stacked on top of that where they are responsible for their own investments, this will help to share some of the risk. As mentioned, Van Dahlia is heavily dependent on two very cyclical industries. So in times of economic downturn, we believe that the risk sharing will greatly help to have their liabilities shared in the future. And we also looked at seven of the other Rust Belt states, and five of them have moved towards a stacked hybrid plan in the past five years. So again, just being well aligned with the peers and having great benefits for all Vandalians to work in the state. And so looking at our implementation plan, the three-pronged pro approach begins with the immediate asset allocation. So within the first six months, you'll see the new returns and the reduction of volatility. And also immediately, we recommend to reduce the benefit factor for new employees um, and also move to that stacked hybrid plan. So at the end of that first year, once you have a little bit more liquidity moving around, you can look for the new board member additions, which as Raphael mentioned, have a little bit more investment experience just to really align the strategy of the fund with uh, um, the purpose of the fund. So we see you being well on your way to being fully funded within the five-year range. And just to conclude here, the ultimate benefits of our holistic approach are to have improved performance against the relative asset class benchmarks, which will then improve you to be fully funded to move from that 78% to 100% funded. And because our main goal of our recommendation is to ensure that this is a sustainable and realistic solution, by reducing the future liabilities, we ensure that this will not happen again. And so to conclude, we believe that with our holistic approach, you are now prepared for a funded future so that unlike the victims of 9-11, the heroes of Vandalia will be taken care of like they take care of the state. Thank you.